Well, hello and welcome to another sermon on our Tribulation Solar Comms YouTube and Facebook. And as you can see, we're back in the garage. It's really windy outside, listen. It's not bad just now where it was. And it's actually very, very busy this morning. It's normally quite quiet in this little area here, but one of the neighbours has got their grandkids in, which is awesome. They're having great fun, so you might hear them from time to time. And a couple of bangs and rattles from the shed. Yeah, so just real quick. Um, I haven't been able to get out and get my glasses fixed just yet. I'm not kidding you guys, I've been so busy. I've been under Emily's lorry and I've had the diff off and the gearbox and all sorts of stuff. And um, I've got this, I don't know if you can see, hopefully, it's just swollen up at home here, I've got a tooth taken out. So I'm not looking good. Not that I care what I look like, you know, but hopefully it's not a distraction for you. But yeah, I've just got to get so much stuff done, you know, and I just keep plodding on and plodding on until it's done. As always guys, you know, we are YouTubers, so you've got to say, you know, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit notifications on this channel we're building. This, this one's taken a lot longer than the other channels, like David and Emily's and, um, you know, our Barney family channels. So, um, I really want to get this channel filled and filled and filled as we go along. Yeah, so hoping to share another message with you, but we would call us Christians the words of life, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, so I just wanted to share about the Saviour today, that was sort of off the back of the last sermon. And, um, you know, most people in the world know who Jesus Christ is, whether they believe in him or not, they've heard the story, you know, the creation, the, all that sort of stuff that goes along with that. So, you know, it's a matter of belief, you know, whether you believe or whether you believe not. You might see how, you know, Christians are off the church each Sunday, you know, all over the world and they follow God, they listen to music, they pray, you know, they try to help people around them and all that sort of things. And for the most part, that comes from those Christians experiencing God, you know, actually experiencing them, not just having some blind faith. And it's that thing I want to share with you today. So don't get too hung up on this next bit, you know, but, um, you know, as Christians, we believe that um, the world is about 6,000 years old. You know, there's a, a guy that actually counted back. I don't know if you know that part of the, the Old Testament where it says, you know, so-and-so begat this and begat that. There was actually a guy that went back through that. So the closest, I think, was um, 4,035, I think it was, before Christ. And then, of course, the Cross of Christ, which most people in the world have, world have heard of. And now here we are, just over 2,000 years later. And this God that's got this great plan and this whole thing that he's got going on in this life he somehow affects us as people, as Christians. You know, you, you don't just believe. You don't just read your word and stand there in church and worship and stuff. That's, that's not what it's all about. It's looking to experience in him, having a true relationship with him, him being your friend, your father, your saviour. But this saviour on the cross might be a thing that you don't quite understand. And I'm not, I'm going to be very, very brief, don't worry. Um, the saviour on the cross, Jesus Christ, the one that apparently took my sins, yesterday, today and tomorrow. I'm a sinner saved by grace. But he took this punishment. And this moment was the biggest pivotal moment in the history of mankind. The, in the history of mankind. So again, 6,000 years ago, creation took place, obviously. You know, you'll know the story that Adam and Eve, they fell and all that sort of things. And then 4,000 years later, you get this Jesus Christ that comes along. And he gives his life. He tells everybody, I'm going to have to give my life for you. I've got to sacrifice myself. And um, now, anyone who believes in him will be saved. I've got that eternal hope. So you've got the creation, 4,000 years later, you've got the, the um, coming of Christ and the sacrifice of Christ. And at an unknown date in the future, he will come back on his second coming and that will bring mankind's history on earth to a close. That's the way the story goes. So how can I sit here? How can I sit here? And I wasn't there at creation. I can't see the future. Why am I 100% convinced about this great God? How am I? Because of the story seems absurd. That actually says that in, in the, the Bible, that a lot of people think that it's foolish. It's just a foolish story. But I don't believe in stories. To me, I believe in the experience, the facts of my experiences, and the Christians around me as well. And what happens is, it's, it, they do think it's quite absurd, you know, this great creator, maker of heaven and earth, the whole universe, um, you know, at some point in the world will end, this history will come to a close at some point in the future, which I've got absolutely no concerns about at all. How can I be 100% convinced about all that? The, the way things work, and this is just as plain as I can put it, is that I've experienced God on an actual sort of physical level, like most Christians, you know, and um, to, 
to varying degrees for electricians, it just depends who you are. And what you find is that um, basically everything he says is true. You know, when he actually begins to work in your life, you begin to have that experienced relationship with him. Oh, I'd, be, I'd be a fellow we forgot ages ago if I didn't experience him. I've got to experience him. But you start to experience him and you see that he wants to be involved in every aspect of your life and not as a, as a dictator. That's not true at all. God is all about setting people free. All about setting people free. I'm going to say it three times. All about setting people free. He wants to be in that relationship. And I see him in things so often um, that people might say, oh, it's just coincidence. But there are times, real moments, where you just cannot deny it in your marriage, in your family life, your work life, all these things. And you look at this God and you think, you know, you're really interested in my job, you know, you know, or my family. But he is. He is very, very interested. He wants to be a part of that. He wants to give that advice, that counsel, that leading to help a person through life. And what we find is that all these things he talks about in his word, as experience goes on, it takes time. You see that he never, ever seems to let you down. He never deviates from what his word teaches and preaches. But I need more than that. I need that word, that Bible to come alive in my life. And that's what most Christians want as well, for that word to come, up, come alive. Because it's the foundation. But he has proved himself time and time again flawlessly in my life as a Christian. And although I never saw creation, and though I never saw, I haven't seen the end yet, I believe those things because of what he does in my life just now. If he's right about this stuff, and he's doing it in my life just now, he has to be right about that, and he has to be right about that. He just has to be. And you have that in life then. You have this sure foundation and this saviour that died on the cross for you. And here it goes, back to the cross again. This Jesus being crucified on the cross, taking the punishment for me and you. And you say, why? Why? Because God, when all said and done, wants a people for eternity that chose him from their own free will. He could have made robots. He could have just had legions of angels, which he has. He wanted a people for himself. And it's a great mystery in, in so many ways. And that's the, the exciting part, is the mystery and the finding out and the revelation and getting to know him week after week, month after month, year after year, through all your experiences. Just amazing. But somebody had to pay for the Garden of Eden. Somebody had to pay. In the Old Testament, it was always uh, your blood of goats and bullocks and all that sort of stuff. But then there was going to come this Christ who was going to be the single sacrifice to cover absolutely everything. And Jesus loved us that much. He was thinking of us today, me and you, as we sit here talking. He was thinking of us when he was on the cross. I know that. A hundred percent. That he had to live his whole life in thought, word and deed to bring that Old Testament to a close, to bring forward the new in grace, which is just phenomenal. And he continues to pay for my sins today. Whatever I do later on today that's just me being a moron or something like that, you know, he's paid for it. And because he's paid for it, I can change, I can move on. And I can be set free from all these things from my past and the present and all these sorts, you know. Because Jesus did it. It's called the power of the cross. The blood of Jesus. And he did it for us. Which is just amazing. And if that doesn't ring through to you just now, it will. God wants to show you that. He wants to show you the fullness of that. Of what happened that day, in that hour, when Jesus was on the cross and the Father had to turn away from him all the sins of mankind, everything was put on his shoulders. And then when he died, they died. And that's why I'm free. I'm never going to be the perfect person. I'm never going to be the perfect pastor. That is just nonsense. I'll never be sinless. That is nonsense as well. I'm a sinner saved by grace. But because of that cross, I know that those things can't affect my salvation as a Christian. Because he took the punishment. Uh, people in the world, it says it in the world as well, you know, that people find it absurd. Just, just a foolish story. That somehow this creator, maker of heaven and earth, wants his people for himself. For all eternity, people that chose him. 
that this life is actually only 6,000 years old, it's not millions or billions. And all the truths come through you, all the truths that ring through you, to a point where you are absolutely assured of this God in your life. It's just tremendous, it really is just tremendous, guys. This Saviour can be yours, I can assure you of, of that. He can be yours. And if you are watching this, you know, in six months' time, a year's time, these kind of teachings are timeless. It doesn't really matter when you watch it. God sees you watch it, you know, and you respond to him. It's just tremendous, guys. It really is. You're missing out on this huge relationship with God, and I'll keep preaching and teaching that. I just keep having to share it with you. I wish I could give you that bottle of how I feel right this minute and give you a drink. You'd be convinced in a second absolutely convinced but as always i'll always be here you know i'm going to pile on these teachings and sermons and all sorts of stuff you know and i just really hope it's a support to you that'll encourage you that might just really excite you about god and um, and really move you forward in our, your life he can transform your life absolutely totally 100 percent transform your life so listen guys, thank you so much for watching. Just a brief bit about the Saviour. You know, I could preach on the cross hours and hours on end, you know, sermon upon sermon upon sermon. But hopefully I've kind of condensed everything down for you to give you a thought that this isn't blind faith that you're seeing, guys. This is experience, actual experience of an actual God who is very, very real and wants to be a part of your life regardless of your past or what you've done.